simplify a square root but now with variables involved. And before we can do these, let's just point something out. If I know 3 squared is 9, then I can say that the square root of 9 is 3. So if I look at it this way, what I had to begin with is what I will get outside of a square root as long as this squared gets undone. And so if I look at it with a couple more examples, the square root of 4 squared becomes 16, which is just 4. So it's like the act of it being squared and then square rooting it just kind of inverts and undoes that process to where you have what you started with. And if I wanted to keep going, I could do the same thing with 5 squared. But instead of writing it out as 25, I'll just be like, well, I know that gets rid of what happened. So we're good. Square root of 10 squared? Just 10. And the reason I bring this up is because if I throw a variable in there that's to the second power, then I know it will undo it, and I'll just be left with what I began with. And if I ever wanted to work my way backwards, I'd be like, what you know times itself would get me what's on the inside? And so if I took x and I multiplied it by itself, I would end up with that x squared that was under the radical, working my way backwards. And let's see why that's a little bit important. So I know that if I take x squared and multiply x squared by itself, that I get x to the fourth. So this means that x to the fourth, when square rooted, is just x squared. Because it has to be something times itself in there. And this can go even further than that. What if I had the square root of x to the power of 8? Well, that would be x to the fourth times x to the fourth. And really, as long as I have an even number here, like 100, I know that's not super clear, so that's 100. And if I take the square root of x to the power of 100, I'm going to get x to the power of 50. And this involves all those older ideas from that previous chapter where you had x to the power of a times x to the power of b, and you could add those together to combine them. So there's so many ideas coming to play here, and hopefully um, they're feeling kind of okay with this little intro stuff. Now what if I wanted to take the square root of x to the power of 5? Well, I can treat this as two separate things. The closest even number to 5 without going over times x to the power of 1. Now I can take square root of x to the 4th and I would bring x squared out, but I couldn't do anything with that other x, so I'm stuck with that. And I want you to see that x to the 5th in a radical gets simplified to look like that. So let's see these in action. So let's see these in action. The um, difficulty levels increase. So let's rewrite the square root of 40 times x to the 4th y to the 5th z cubed. And as I look at this, you know, if this was just the square root of 40, so in red I'm going to show you how, in red I'm going to show you how you could optionally break this down. Now maybe you're like, well, 4 times 10, and that works out nicely because then you could turn uh, that 4 into a 2 and be left with square root of 10 in there. But maybe you don't do that. Maybe you can actually jump right into these. But that is something that you should rewrite and jump back a few seconds to get written down if you need to see that. Um, but I am going to rewrite the square root of 40 as 4 times 10 in my radical. And I'm going to rewrite x to the 4th as x to the 4th because it's even. If I wanted to, I could rewrite it as x squared times x squared and be like, well, there's two pairs. And since I have a pair, I know I can pull x to the second power out. And then I'm going to rewrite y to the fifth, though, as y to the fourth times y to the power of one. That's my closest even number, and then that little extra chunk. So, you know, this whole quantity of y to the fifth, I haven't changed it yet. I've just rewritten it. And then lastly, z cubed, I would turn into z squared times z to the power of one. So 
now let's look at this left to right. Everything that was in here has shown up again right there. Square root of 4 comes out as a positive 2 on the left side of my radical. Now, square root of 10, I can't take out. No perfect square comes out of it. And there's also no other numbers that are just plain numbers for me to combine this with. Um, I'm going to write a time symbol there. I move on left to right. x to the fourth power comes out as x squared. y to the fourth power comes out as y squared. Now, I do not rewrite this y because that has to remain under my radical. I will write z squared as z. And then I scan through this, and I've already ended up to the very end. And now I go back and I collect everything that I couldn't do anything with under the radical. So 10, and then y, and then z. And this time, when I wrote those, I didn't bother putting to the power of 1, because it was a little bit unnecessary. And if you want to be kind of neat on these, I took my radical further than was necessary so I can close that in tighter. Now, I would suggest that as you do these, you know, there's different ways you could do this. So if you just typed in simplify and then that into Wolfram Alpha, here's how you do a square root, though. Type in S Q R T, open up a parentheses, and that's saying that everything you put in there will end up in a square root once you close the parentheses. And as you've seen with this, it'll preview um, what it looks like. So pause the video and give yourself a chance to do that. I'm going to move on to number 2. Square root of 32, r squared, s to the 4th, t to the 5th. Now the reason that they bother mentioning this is when you cube a negative number, it can end up as negative. So the whole purpose of this greater than 0 constraint that gets mentioned in some of these is that um, they want you to know that uh, because these are odd numbers, we're not going to be dealing with negatives because that's going to get into a different area of math that we'll learn more about later on. Okay, I see 32, and I'm thinking about what perfect square can go in there. So 16 does, and so 16 times 2. Now, this is that extra in-between step where you could rewrite this as 16 times 2. Go ahead and do that and rewrite it and get caught up. But I'm going to cut that step out, and I'm going to pull 16 out to the left, but as 4. Now, here's the deal. Now, I'm pushing my working memory, though. I have to come back and scan through it all if I'm going to cut that corner r squared comes out as r. s to the fourth is an even number, so I'll write s squared. Now, t to the fifth, if you can't... Remember that t to the fifth is t to the fourth and t to the first, then maybe write that off to the side. And that side work will help you um, get through this. So t to the fourth comes out to the left as t squared. I've scanned through, I'm looking at this with my eyes going left to right, and I've finished everything that I can take out. And in my radical, I remember that that was 16 times 2. R is gone, S is gone, but I am left with that T to the first power. I don't need my radical to go so far over, so I'll tighten that up a little bit and box it. Now let's say you did end up with things that you could keep simplifying. Well, then you just keep on going, you know, and simplify further. Okay. Type that into Wolfram Alpha optionally, but 3 is going to be an OYO problem, so I am going to, in about 5, 4, we'll put the answer up, 3, 2, 1. Now over here on the right, I've written a couple things, 56 broken down into 7 and 8, 8 into 2 and 4, and the reason for that is that that 4 gives me one of the perfect squares that I pull out, which is 2. Um, now I'm going to pull y to the 5th out, and then z squared, because I've kind of shown that this is z to the fourth and z to the first. That's really unclear, I'm sorry. But then I open up my radical, and this is where these leftover guys that I couldn't do anything with become 14. Under my radical, though. And that might have felt kind of peculiar to you, so I'll talk about that more in a second. Here's my x that I couldn't do anything, and my z that I couldn't do anything with. And I'm going to work this back on out. I'm going to like show you how you could check this in reverse. Um, 
2 squared, and I say 2 squared because that's what I turn it back into if I try to get it in my radical, is 4, and then 4 times 14 is 56. Okay, that's the starting number we had to begin with. Now I'll check, you know, the next thing I see in this problem. Well, here's y to the fifth. Well, if I squared that, it would end up being y to the tenth in here, and that's what we had to begin with. Um, I got a z squared going on here. That would become z to the fourth, and then add it to that guy. It would become z to the fifth. That checks out. And then I rescan through everything. Well, I already talked about the 14 here. Um, so that means this, that's my x that I left over with. Um, so that was me walking backwards through the problem to make sure everything checked out and was okay. Now here's the deal. You could also um, just look at that and uh, type it in Wolfram Alpha, but I think my way is better um, and you know a good guarantee that you're learning this stuff accurately. Um, one more thing, too. Like if you're taking a test, there's no reason not to do these problems twice if you wanted. I'm going to hold off on this for another video and um, stop this one here. So this will actually be four videos total. But yeah, this is simplifying square roots of variables. Hopefully it feels great.